everyone. So now that we've gone through how to build a k-nearest neighbors model for this uh, particular data set, uh, we're going to do the same thing for a logit model, right? Um, and um, if you remember from the discussion, right, logit models build upon um, the uh, build upon um, the regression models by basically trying to predict individual classes rather than a particular regressed value, right? So they're going to have the output is going to be um, a, a binary uh, output, right? And in fact, if you look right here, we're basically are using something similar to what you saw in the first couple of our lectures about building models, where we're using GLM, right, which stands for generalized linear model. Actually, we're using GLM in this particular case, but I believe LM also supports it. Um, and we're going to regress y right, which is our outcome variable, on the age, balance, and duration. I just chose these three to kind of look at, right? Um, and the family we're going to use to link it is the binomial family. If you look at the GLM help, right, and you go down to family, right, there are a whole bunch of families that you can get. And the binomial is essentially the logit model, right? There's other options as well, but I won't go into those today, right? So, and the data that we're going to use to build this model is the training data, right? So that's essentially how we do this. And if we run the model, we get the new logit model. We could do a summary on that. And if I blow this up a little bit, you can see it maybe a little better, right? Uh, but essentially, we get um, a standard kind of distribution, but then we get this kind of how much each of the variables affects the outcome. So um, age has a small negative effect on whether or not someone accepts the offer, but as you can see, it's negative 3.6 times 10 to the negative three. So it's like 0 0.03, right? And these are in terms of increasing and decreasing the possibility. Balance has a positive effect. It's very small though. It's actually to the negative five, right? Um, and duration has a, um, a positive effect, but it's a little bit stronger than the balance. So um, and as you can see, there is no statistical significant relationship between age. So let's ignore that for a second. But balance, right, has a statistically significant relationship as does duration, right? Uh, and so what, but, but the duration number is orders of magnitude larger than the estimate. So this tells you that balance, sorry, duration has a huge impact on whether or not someone accepts the offer. And if you remember, duration is the last time I called this person, how long did they stay on the line? Right. So the more likely someone is to willing to talk to the person, the more likely they are to actually uh, accept the offer this time when I call them. Right. Um, so that's the basic model. Right. And um, we can kind of but the output of a logit model. Right. Is going to be the probability that the class is yes or no. Right. What we can do right with that is we can use the prediction. Right, so if we run this prediction code right here, we can take the model, and there's a function built into R called predict that will allow us to predict the what the result of every every data is on the test data. And so you get these like numbers, 0 0.012, 0 0.013, right? But we don't really have a way to actually make um, a particular classification from that. So one thing you could do, for instance, you could just say, if the prediction is greater than 0.5, then I'm going to label it as a one. And if it's not, I'm going to label it as a zero and one being um, yes and zero being no, right? So I can run the prediction, right? And then I can see what's the performance of that in much the same way, whoops, scan down too far, in much the same way that we did before, right? So this is the same, this is the same table that we were creating before for the key nearest neighbors, right? And so in this case, you see that um, we predict a no, right, for 10,000 cases, right? And it was actually a no, and we predict a one for 163 cases, and it was actually a yes. So we actually, get, this model seems to be do a lot much, a better job at getting the true negatives, but maybe not as good a job at getting the true positives, since it falsely predicts a lot of them, right? In fact, if we go up here and we run kind of all of our stats, right, um, the specificity, which is the same as the true negative rate, is very high. It's much higher than what we saw for the k-nearest neighbors. 
Uh, but the sensitivity recall is actually pretty low. It's the lowest number we've seen for so far, right? Um, and the precision is not very good. But the overall accuracy, because there's so many negatives, is actually pretty good. If we scan way back up, oh, I gotta go a little ways for this, right? Um, to, it might be actually easier to just kind of pull the code down again. I'll do that again, okay. So I'll go back up and I'll just pull, run the same thing on the k -Nars Neighbors 10, right? And you can see that the difference in the accuracy isn't that much between the two, right? Um, and why is the difference not that much? Because there's a lot of negatives, right? And so even though the true positive rate um, the, the, the specificity, sorry, yeah, the specificity has gone down and the precision has gone down, right? In the end, that doesn't matter too much because the, on the overall accuracy, and this is again a reason why you shouldn't use overall accuracy. So that's, um, building a logistic model. I'm going to pause there and in the next section, we're going to talk about building an SVM.